please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. Link is in the description. Angels, heavenly winged beings who guide lost souls to salvation. Or are they many-eyed cosmic horrors that terrify innocent people minding their own business? Well, either way, angels are an important part of the Abrahamic religions. But did you know that, according to some groups within these religions, there are many different types of angels? Today we'll look into the angelic hierarchy put forward by the medieval Catholic Church. Before we continue, here's a quick word from our sponsor, and that sponsor is Atlas VPN. We all like the internet, right? With the internet, we can learn new things, shop online, and chat with friends all over the world. But the modern internet isn't always safe, and that's where Atlas VPN comes in. Atlas VPN protects your internet travel, which means your data will be protected from invasive tracking, snooping, and the dangers of public Wi-Fi. Enjoy amazingly fast speeds and protect an unlimited number of devices. And it even helps you get the best deals when shopping online. But here's my favorite part. So let's say like me you want to watch Friends on Netflix, but you live in America where Friends and many other television series and movies aren't available. Well, no problem. Just load up Atlas VPN, scroll down, pick the UK, and boom, a whole new world of TV shows and movies are available to you. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a big deal. Atlas VPN Premium is now just $1.99 per month, plus three months extra, and with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get the many benefits of Atlas VPN for this ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick, as it's a limited time offer. Thank you again to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. So first off, let's define what an angel even is. The term angel comes from the Greek angelos, which is a translation of the Hebrew malak, meaning messenger. In the Hebrew Bible and in the Greek New Testament, the word refers to both heavenly and human messengers. But once the Bible was translated into Latin, the meanings split. Human messengers were referred to with words like nuntius or legatus, while heavenly messengers were referred to as angels. From then on, all heavenly beings save God were called angels. But there is an argument to be made that calling all heavenly spirits angels is inaccurate. The Bible uses many terms for angels, and this hierarchy reflects that. That said, I'll still be using angel to refer to them all generally. So where did this hierarchy come from? Is it from the Bible? Well, no, it's not. While the Bible does describe the angel Michael as archangel, meaning prince angel, no other hint at a specific hierarchy is present. So what gives? Well, in Thomas Aquinas's Summa Theologica, perhaps the most important book on Catholic theology ever written, Aquinas does indeed lay out a hierarchy in heaven. Aquinas states that there are three hierarchies within the angelic order, each containing three choirs. But where did he get these ideas? Did he make them up whole cloth? No. Instead, he cites a man called Dionysius, and it is from his writings where we discover the origin of the idea. Dionysius the Areopagite was a man mentioned as a student of Paul the Apostle in the Book of Acts. Many books were attributed to him in the Middle Ages, and his association with Paul gave the works a certain amount of apostolic credibility. And one of these books was the Celestial Hierarchy. We now know that the man who wrote the book was not Dionysus the Areopagite, or at least not the one that we know from the Book of Acts. He was instead a Neoplatonic philosopher living in Syria or thereabouts during the 5th century. But medieval people, like Aquinas, thought he was the real thing. So with all that finally out of the way, here's the hierarchy. Starting from the bottom, we have angels, archangels, and principalities. This hierarchy was the closest to mankind, and their responsibilities reflected that. So, starting with angels. Yep, just plain angels. These are your bog-standard celestial messengers from God. In the Bible, they tend to take on human form, so I've decided not to give this one any wings. An example from Genesis is when three angels, well, one might have been God, visit Abraham. 
Abraham looked up and saw three men standing near him. He ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. If you've ever heard of a guardian angel, these are the angels that would have that task. Thomas Aquinas, who separated the ranks of angels based on their knowledge of the universe, said these angels had the least understanding of God's plans and were ordered to be protectors of individuals and families. Next up we have archangels. By the name, you'd think they were at the top of the heap. But no, according to medieval Catholic theology, they're right here, second from the bottom. Archangels deliver the most important messages and do the most important jobs for God on earth. They are also the only angels who have given names. Well, if you don't count fallen angels, that is. There are two named angels that every Christian agrees on. The first is the Archangel Gabriel. His name means God is my strength, and he is the foremost messenger of God. We first meet him in the book of Daniel, where he explains a vision the prophet had seen. He, uh, most famously to Christians, was the angel that announced the coming of Christ to Mary in the Gospel of Luke. He's not actually called an archangel in the Bible, but other works like the book of Enoch do describe him this way. And Catholic, Orthodox, Anglicans, and Lutherans call him archangel as well. Next we have Michael. His name means who is like God, and he is chief of the angels, protector of Israel and the church. He's mentioned briefly in the book of Daniel as well. He's more heavily featured in the New Testament, however, most prominently in the book of Revelations, where he defeats the devil in the form of a great dragon. These two angels are agreed to be archangels by most Christians, as they're mentioned in the Bible, but there are two others usually included. Raphael, whose name means God heals, is in the book of Tobit, a book of the Old Testament accepted by the Catholics and Orthodox, but not by Protestants, who place it in the Apocrypha. It's also not included in the modern Jewish Bible, though Raphael is mentioned in the Talmud. Lastly, Uriel, whose name means flame of God, is found in the second book of Esdras, a book considered apocryphal by most Christian churches, but some include it. Regardless, these four archangels are accepted by many Christian denominations. So the top of the lowest hierarchy are the principalities. Their name, along with the names of three other choirs of angels we'll get to, come from a single line in Colossians, one of Paul's letters. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. This line is a bit hard to parse, honestly, but Dionysius interpreted these names as ranks of angels. Principalities are thought to have responsibility over large groups of people, like nations, churches, and other large organizations. Because of this, they don't tend to interact with individuals. So on to the middle hierarchy. This one includes powers, virtues, and dominions. These angels deal little with humans. Honestly, little of substance is written about this hierarchy, both by Dionysius and Aquinas. Powers are warrior angels, and they make up a large portion of God's celestial army. They have the power to suppress evil and demonic forces. Virtues, whose name doesn't seem to be in the Bible, or, well, obviously the word virtue is in the Bible, but I couldn't find where Dionysius possibly thought the word referred to an angel. Anyway, in later writings, especially of the esoteric variety, virtues have power over the elements, meaning they make natural phenomena happen. They also have a hand in the miracles on Earth that are meant to lead people to salvation. And highest of the middle hierarchy are dominions. They are only described as having dominion over angels below them, so I guess they're like the middle management of heaven. And now to the highest hierarchy, consisting of thrones, cherubim, and seraphim. They seem to spend almost all of their time with God in heaven and have little if anything to do with humans. Thrones are perhaps the most famous rank in the biblically accurate angel iconography. Yep, these are the ones that look like wheels with eyes on them. That image comes from Ezekiel in one of his visions. Their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl, and the four had the same form. 
their construction being something like a wheel within a wheel. When they moved, they moved in any of the four directions, without veering as they moved. Their rims were tall and awesome, for the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. So, pretty weird, right? Most scholars take this account as a metaphor, a way of describing the wheels of God's throne. And some artists even interpret this as circles of angels flying around God in heaven, not that the angels themselves looked like wheels. Anyway, their job is to hold up God's heavenly throne. Next are the cherubim. Cherubim are quite famous, referenced in songs and of course in art where they are often depicted as cupids, or puto, young babies with wings. While this depiction proved popular in Renaissance and Baroque art, it is not how cherubs look in the Bible. In fact, the two depictions couldn't be further from each other. The first time we meet a cherub is in Genesis, where God places one holding a flaming sword to guard the Garden of Eden. It seems this was the main function of the cherubim, to guard sacred spaces. For example, two images of cherubim were placed atop the Ark of the Covenant, and in Ezekiel's vision the cherubim were guarding God's throne. So what do these angels look like if not babies? Well, Ezekiel gives quite a description. He says they had four faces, one of a man, one of a bull, one of a lion, and the last of an eagle. Uh, they had two sets of wings, two wrapped around themselves, and two used to fly. Some art depicts them with the bodies of beasts as well. But since they are sometimes described as holding things or having hands and feet, I've drawn this one like this. This depiction of a human-animal hybrid was very common in Middle Eastern mythology and religion. Think of the Sphinx in Egypt, or the Lamassu from Assyria. Oh, and if you were wondering in what level the devil resided before his fall from heaven, Aquinas, as well as other medieval theologians, thought he was a fallen cherub. The very last angels, the highest of them all, are the seraphim. We see them most prominently in Isaiah chapter 6, where again the prophet describes a vision he had. He said that seraphim surrounded God's throne, they had six wings, two covering their eyes, two covering their feet, and two used to fly. They are the tenders to God's throne, and constantly sing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is filled with his glory. The name seraphim is usually translated as burning ones. This could mean they were beings of fire or light. But the word seraph actually means serpent. They're never depicted as snakes, though there have been some scholars that suggest they ought to be. The usual explanation is that snakes are sometimes red, like fire, or that their venom burns like fire. So there we are, the nine ranks of angels. Seraphim, cherubim, thrones, dominions, virtues, powers, principalities, archangels, and angels. I hope you enjoyed. Make sure to like and subscribe, and support me on Patreon. Also, thanks again to Atlas VPN. Remember to click the link in the description to get their special offer while you still can. Bye!